it's uh, an honor to uh, follow uh, Guy Kawasaki. I was actually uh, backstage throwing out my big, ugly, black uh, laptop. So uh, <laughs> I am uh, honored to be here today. It's been a dream of mine to talk at TED, and uh, I'm in a great mood. Partly because I'm here, and also because I got some fantastic news today. Uh, looks like I just came into a couple hundred grand. And I was just notified via email the money is already waiting for me. Uh, it's in Nigeria, so. <laughs> but uh, they've asked me uh, to talk here today, I guess partially because of my background. I actually did come into comedy in a little bit of an unusual fashion. Uh, I, I finished my PhD in ecology and evolution at UC Davis. And I went into comedy, which I do not recommend. It's a little like spending six years of your life training for the Olympics and then going, you know what, I think I'd rather be a glass blower. <laughs> a lot of people think it's strange that a scientist would become a comedian. I don't think that's strange. I think it'd be weird if someone went the other way. <laughs> hey, did you hear who's run a Los Alamos nuclear laboratory? Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Uh, one question I get a lot is, uh, did you always know you wanted to be a comedian? And no, I didn't, but I mean, I had some hints. I knew I wanted to be poor and ridiculed, uh, and that limited my job options. Uh, but I have found a way uh, to combine the two. I'll give you guys a brief uh, seminar here uh, tonight. I'm going to give you, a, actually this afternoon, a review of linear regression, which is a tool you'll see in a lot of the talks here. Uh, this is a way to get uh, an understanding of uh, the relationship between two or more variables. Uh, to do an informal regression, pretty simply, just take all your data points, uh, you plot them out, uh, and then you draw uh, the best possible line you can uh, in between them. Uh, in this case, I was interested in what kind of people are behind the plethora of cat videos. Uh, I found a significant relationship uh, between the amount of free time the individual has. Uh, <laughs> I also found a significant relationship uh, between uh, the number of friends the individual has. <laughs> uh, so I combined the two into this three-dimensional model. And, uh, we get this uh, complex response surface. I find that most cat videos are produced by individuals living in this region right up here. Uh, individuals from this region responsible for such classics as uh, Cat Certo, uh, the Mean Kitty Song, the Meaner Kitty Song, the Mean Little Kitty Song, the Little Mean Kitty Song, the Diddy of the Kitty Litter, the Kitty Litter Diddy, the Litter Kitties Diddy, and all of Katy Perry's songs. <laughs> Hi, Katy. Logistic function. Uh, this is something you encounter pretty early in your study of population dynamics. Uh, populations can grow rapidly, uh, but they can't grow infinitely. Uh, and so you end up uh, with a sort of uh, S-shaped uh, relationship, which I found in many places uh, throughout nature. Uh, here's one of the places uh, that I've experienced it uh, personally. Uh, on the x-axis here is the, the distance I am uh, from the nearest town. And the line here is uh, uh, how willing I am to eat trail mix. <laughs> There is a distance uh, at which it becomes edible, <laughs> uh, but uh, at no distance does it ever become appealing. <laughs> uh, edibility uh, starts to go rapidly uh, right down here. Uh, that is the point where a, a taco shop is no longer an option. <laughs> Here's another place I've encountered a logistic relationship. Uh, X-axis here is the number of months you've been uh, dating uh, your partner. And the uh, line here is uh, your partner's visible baggage. Uh, first six months, things pretty well hidden. Uh, and that starts to change rapidly.
I don't know how many people saw this article, but uh, I thought this was fascinating. Target's actually hired statisticians uh, to analyze their customers' shopping patterns. And they were able to figure out this uh, girl was pregnant before her father knew because she was buying uh, magnesium supplements, calcium supplements, and lots of lotion, which is something pregnant women do. I didn't even know that myself. Uh, but it became an issue because they started sending her coupons for maternity clothing. And her father intercepted the coupons in the mail and called the store and said, you know, you have no business sending my 16-year-old daughter coupons for maternity clothing. And it turns out they did. Uh, <laughs> they've also come up with another algorithm uh, to help them determine who's been stealing from their stores. Uh, for example, uh, if they're missing skinny jeans from the inventory, uh, what they're looking for uh, is a hipster. Uh, if they're missing uh, an iPhone case, uh, what they're looking for is a, a working professional. Uh, if they're missing a Samsung Galaxy case, uh, what they're looking for is an out-of-work professional. Uh, if they're missing a Blackberry case, uh, what they're looking for is uh, no one. Missing a Speedo and massage oil. Uh, before is, uh... Whoops. Uh, real matrices. Uh, real matrices are used in control systems uh, to map inputs uh, to outputs. Uh, one control system uh, we're all familiar with uh, is a classroom. Uh, this was the teacher's rule matrix uh, for my parents' generation. Uh, if the child is calm, uh, do nothing, uh, child is hyper, uh, send a recess, uh, child is bored, uh, yell at child, uh, child is insubordinate, uh, hit child. Uh, my parents uh, weren't real crazy about that system, uh, so they sent me uh, to much more of a, a hippie school uh, where we had a different set of rules. Uh, if the child is calm, uh, praise child. Uh, child is hyper, uh, praise child. <laughs> Uh, child is bored, uh, praise child. Child is insubordinate, call parents. <laughs> My parents never hit me. Uh. And of course, today things have changed uh, once again. Uh, today, if child is calm, uh, give Zoloft. Child is hyper, uh, give Ritalin. Child is bored, uh, give Adderall. Child is insubordinate, give time out. So um, we'll get back to that in a second. I should probably deal with this because pretty early on when I start talking, people notice immediately that I kind of have a, a natural uh, announcer voice, um, which can actually come in handy. Uh, like I uh, recently uh, purchased a new automobile, and when I got home, uh, I could explain to my roommate, it's a brand new car. <laughs> That's right, it's a Ford Escort fully loaded. <laughs> but the problem is, I am stuck with this voice. And it's not always appropriate. Guess what, buddy? Your cat's been killed. <laughs> That's right, it was run over by a Ford Escort, fully loaded. <laughs> and the other thing about having a low voice is that it's scary for children. So when I meet a child, I change my voice a little bit, and I explain to them that you don't know the power of the dark side. <laughs> Having a good time uh, in San Diego, I actually had to stop uh, my coffee shop uh, on the way over here to sort of get uh, my morning perk going. And um, there was a cop in line in front of me ordering, and he had his uh, gun just hanging out there to the side. 
And for some reason, every time I see that, a little voice goes off in my head and goes, grab the gun, Tim. <laughs> He's not even looking, just go. <laughs> uh, there's no possible good outcome from that situation. I realize there is a voice inside me that wants me to sacrifice myself strictly for amusement. <laughs> and that is the voice that got me into comedy. <laughs> but it's uh, a little bit of a, a complicated uh, world out there, uh, which is going to segue us into uh, our next seminar topic, uh, which is Taylor series. It's a way to get an understanding of, of a complex function over limited range. And uh, the first order approximation basically says, uh, if you know where you are uh, and which direction you're headed, uh, at least over the short term, you're pretty sure where you're going to end up. And I, I find this is true in life as well. Uh, for example, if you're a college student, you're studying engineering, uh, you're pretty sure you're going to end up as an uh, engineer. Uh, if you're studying math, uh, we're pretty sure you're going to end up as a uh, math teacher. Uh, if you're studying history, uh, we're pretty sure you're going to end up as a uh, barista. If you're studying theater, uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to end up as uh, an actor. <laughs> if you're a starting teacher and you're doing an outstanding job, uh, we're pretty sure you're going to end up as a uh, tenured teacher. Uh, if you're doing a mediocre job, uh, we're pretty sure you're going to end up as a uh, tenured teacher. If you're doing a, a lousy job, uh, we're pretty sure you're going to end up as a uh, administrator. <laughs> Go Tritons. <laughs> chaos. Uh, one of the tools we have uh, for understanding and analyzing uh, chaotic systems uh, is the final state diagram. And uh, some of you will recognize this as the final state diagram. Uh, for the non-dimensionalized form of the logistic equation. Uh, others will not. Uh, <laughs> but it's easy enough to understand if we replace this cryptic variable r uh, with something a little more tangible. <laughs> so drinkers' final state versus the number of drinks they've had. Uh, if everyone in your party limits themselves to three drinks, uh, pretty much everyone ends up in a reasonable state. Uh, as those reasonable people continue to drink, uh, they split into two groups. As they continue to drink, uh, they split once again. <laughs> Exponential decay uh, is a process we see in uh, radionuclides, also in objects uh, approaching uh, room temperature. Uh, here's the first place that I was introduced to exponential decay. Uh, and the x-axis here uh, is the number of months since my last date, and the line here is uh, my standards. Uh, starts off, I'm looking for uh, good looks, good character, loves the outdoors. After three months, that switches to uh, some looks, some character, tolerates the outdoors. After seven months, that uh, has a head. No warrants. <laughs> Oops. Fuzzy logic. Fuzzy uh, logic, this is a form of computer logic uh, which allows for things uh, to be partially true. Uh, classic example is water. We can think of water when it's frozen at zero degrees Celsius. It's 100% true that water is cold. But as the water gradually gets warmer and warmer, it becomes less and less true that the water is cold and more and more true that the water is hot. Uh, this is how good of an employee you are versus how often you lie. Um, as you lie more and more often, it becomes less and less true that you are a good employee and more and more true that you are a good manager. <laughs> if you lie too much, at some point, even your own employees don't know what to believe, and uh, at that point, you have to move into uh, sales. <laughs> uh, 
and we'll wrap it up with this. Uh, effective population size is a concept introduced uh, by an American geneticist by the name of Sewell Wright. And the idea here is that even though a population may appear to be quite large, uh, in terms of its breeding potential, it can actually be very small. Uh, I see this every time I go to a party uh, looking for a date. Uh, at first glance, it looks like there's a very large population to choose from, uh, but since I'm a straight guy, I immediately eliminate all of the men. Uh, then all the women that are out of my league, uh, all the women that are beneath my standards. <laughs> Anyone that already has a boyfriend? Yeah, who am I kidding? <laughs> All right, that's been it for me. Thank you so much for having me here.